Wow, kawal pemilu, yes. luar biasa. Okay, so care to explain in your own words what kawal pemilu is? Kawal pemilu, um, the way we put it is crowdsourcing transparency for the recent Indonesian presidential election. So those who were familiar with the election, that was really, really tense election. There were only two sides, and they're like complete opposites, perhaps. And <laughs> well, that was really nasty <laughs> in his word, really, really nasty. The, ni the nation was divided, in fact. So kawalpemilu.org is a website that we set up as an independent effort to guard the election. It's actually un unstructured as compared to structured, the structure, and it was sporadic as compared to uh, systematic, and it was viral as compared to massive. So, <laughs> right. So, this website actually put across and present in a very easy and uh, uh, complete detail on the election results. As you can see on the screen here, this is one of the example. When you drill down from the national level to province Bali, to the region Kianyar and then to the district Ubud, you can see the results from each of the villages there. How many votes for Prabowo, how many votes for Jokowi. And in fact, if you click into one of the village, you'll see the exact scan of the polling, polling station results directly from the stations. And to give you a perspective on this, there are 478,828 polling stations all across the nations. So this is what we did. We presented the uh, election result to the people of Indonesia, to the public, in a very open and detailed manner, very transparent. So yeah, people can refer to it. You are not affiliated with any of the two battling candidates, so why, why, why bother? Right. Why? Why is actually the most important question. Um, we were very, very concerned with the situation uh, right after the election was over. Usually, on 5 p.m. at every election, you would have known the quick counts. And previous experience as well has shown that Jokowi's arrival in the uh, Jakarta's uh, governor's election immediately gave congratulation on his winning based on the quick counts. But we didn't see that. We didn't see that. Instead, we saw rivaling quick counts. And both sides claim victory. And being a nation that is, was already in a position of polarized into two different sides, and both of them quickly claim the victory, which with whatever resources they have, one also claim that they have all the C1 data from all the 400,000, so don't trust quick count, just trust our C1 data, and they say we are winning. So the nation was really, really divided, and within just one day, we can only see in the social media, um, and even on the ground, on the news as well, that tension was really, really heating up, and we were worried that there may be chaos. Because there's a very, very slight margin between the right. two parts. And okay. in, fact, in fact, the president himself, Susilo Bambayu Doyono, was very concerned. He had already foreseen the possibility of dispute, whatever the election result, official election result will be. So he made a call, and it's available on YouTube, um, telling the election chief to actually uh, involve everyone to guard the election, he actually used the word kawal pemilu in, in so, his official So he smelled trouble himself. Right. So yes. you, you feel the call to action, but the question is you and what army? Sorry? You and what army? Who are, oh, who are your troops? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it wasn't really me, it's actually them. Well, the main team, there are five of us, <laughs> and I, I like to call them Pandawa. <laughs> One is based in uh, Silicon Valley, all of them are Indonesian. One is in Sydney, Australia. One is in Kaiserslautern in German, and Amsterdam uh, in uh, Netherlands, and myself in Singapore. So these are the smart Alex that have <laughs> built the uh, website. These are the Pandawas, ladies and gentlemen. And the army, we got over 700 volunteers. 
Okay. And they're all around the world. Of course, most of them are in Indonesia itself. We got yeah. from Canada all the way to Timor Leste and New Zealand. So as you can see, uh, 27 countries. Okay, so could you mind going back one slide as going we were back. discussing? <laughs> all right. Okay, okay so, so uh, uh, two, I understand that two of these guys worked for Google, <laughs> correct? <laughs> yeah. Yes. The left, Felix Halim, Silicon Felix. Valley, and Adrian Kurnadi in Sydney, right. Australia. Google so Australia and Google uh, headquarters. So view. they work in Google. So basically, the CIA is all <laughs> behind you guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. That must be it, right? <laughs> no? Okay. No, 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 Very no, well. No, Moving no, on then. No. <laughs> I mean, how do you orchestrate these scattered people right. across the world? That's the beauty of the information technology now, especially the social media. All of these are actually happening in a Facebook group, in a secret Facebook group. Well, secret because they want to be anonymous, not because we are funded by CIA. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so. It's yeah. all right. Okay. <laughs> so we, we actually, I, I gathered a few friends, mostly in Singapore, and then I told them, okay, we have a cause, we have a situation, we, uh, we need to take action to prevent the split of the nation. And so please find your Facebook friends who you feel are trustworthy and tell them to find their Facebook friends who are trustworthy. So it's like exponential growth. And we actually reached 700 in uh, merely three or four days. Right. Wow, that's just phenomenal. So it's practically like a, like a multi-level marketing. Yes, you find yes. your downline. Yes, right. and they're, they're really, really dedicated. You know, the top scorer, they entry the data from 7,354 polling stations by himself alone in five days. Wow. So we, we, we complete everything in six days. I which think, one is it? In Indonesia. He's Indonesia. From, uh, yeah, he must be, uh, yeah, he must be jobless Kalimantan. and lonely then. <laughs> <laughs> 4,000. <laughs> 7,000 form all by himself. Yes. Okay, that's good. That's great. We need more people like him. Okay, so that's, that's how you do it. Practically, you coordinate the, the effort through Facebook right. groups. So it seems like it's quite a smooth sail. You don't find any disturbance or mm. hindrance along the way? Nothing? Yeah, it's, it's more like uh, slander. Slander attack over the internet, like saying, you did say that. Uh, <laughs> funded by CIA. <laughs> funded right. by... And uh, also things like uh, we got like millions of dollars to pay the volunteers yeah, yeah, yeah. and the volunteers are actually starting to ask me for the money. They give me <laughs> invoice, uh, 1,000 rupiah per polling station, that means 7 million for their top scorer. <laughs> So it's just kidding, by the way. There's not it's CIA it's is not behind yeah, this, it's clearly. It's, it's Mossad. But anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, 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 never mind. <laughs> so, yeah, everything quite went quite nicely. So yeah. the question is, what now? So you, you've done a, a, a very uh, humongous task. And by the way, I, I noticed that foreign reporters are coming to you and then yes. they, they find this very, very interesting. Is this, to your knowledge, is this the first in the world that people do this? Um, a Reuters uh, journalist actually who are based in Singapore met me and we talked. And after he released his writing, he mentioned to me that he did research and found that this is the first of its size, the first of its uh, impact as well. We are not really the first in Indonesia even because the election committee has made the data open and uh, we, we knew that there were few other attempts by other groups which were not so successful due to various reasons and we did learn from their uh, unsuccessful attempts. Why were, they, why were they failing? Okay, one was Kawal Suara which th his approach was to open to public and he got a lot of spams. So people like inputting wrong numbers just to make his candidate win and things like that. So they have to like revisit and review and rework the, uh, the, the polling station. So in instead of having almost 500,000 that actually have to do it 1.5 million times to verify. And yeah, of course they wouldn't have enough time. I think they only managed to complete about 20%. So your secrecy was a vital factor in this yeah. action, right? So, yeah. so what now? I mean, the, the, the presidential election is over. You have created mm -hmm. such a magnificently effective system. So what are you going to make use of it now? We learn a lot from this uh, effort. And um, based on these experiences, we found that the key to making some crowdsourcing works perhaps similar with what Amanda in previous video have shared, is actually for us to appeal to people's concern. 
in startup language is like scratching people's itch and what we did was actually scratching a colossal itch of millions of Indonesians who were so anxious uh, waiting for the results two weeks to wait for the official results and we completed in one week so to in that uh, lesson we actually decided to have a few upcoming projects we knew that uh, there will be concern on the one billion rupiah each for each village, so we are thinking of setting up kawaldesa.org regarding the village budget. And uh, there's been also concern on our legislative, the central legislative. Uh, that's why we are now uh, building up kawaldpr.org. And of course, logically, we will be doing similar way in, in election, local election, kawalpilkada.org. But one thing that I would like to highlight actually this initiative gotong.royong.org, currently under development. We would like to bring crowdsourcing into a more holistic view, which is to solve problems all across Indonesia. So we can start by crowd submitting or reporting issues all around Indonesia, and then crowds helping to verify and investigate further for each of those issues, and then brainstorm there. And once the solution is uh, decided by the crowd, they can do crowdfunding if they need fund and crowd volunteering if the task has to be done together. So that's the essence of Gotong Royong. And uh, similar to what uh, John Taylor did for Solo, which was providing kind of a dashboard view for the governments, we believe that if we manage to gain traction with the user base and the problem base, we will be able to provide dashboards to local governments, uh, the governors, and even the president himself, so that he can be able to see what are the problems and what are the sol possible solutions already decided by the community. Okay, I think that's magnificent work, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Mr. Ainun Najib. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.